This meeting is being recorded. Okay, we're all here for PLC number three um, with the PLC Dragons. And this week we're talking a lot about language aptitude and things like that. So take it away, Zuma. Yeah, I'll go for it. <laughs> I'm going to share my screen. Hi, how are you tonight? Good? Good. <laughs> yeah. Great, great. Let me see if I can find this here. I think I have it here. Wait. Okay. Share. Okay. Okay, I work with this. Let me see if I can move. Okay, this is my PLC for today. I use Padlet, I love it. I think it's the best <laughs> so far. Um, you know, I don't know how to move this because it's on the right side. You are on the right side and I cannot see what is on the, the other side of the... How do I move this? Okay, I got it. I got it. Forget about it, girls. <laughs> okay, let's start this. Okay, uh, my three topic. It seems to be like I didn't realize it. Like I like this, and it kind of connected in some some way. And the first one is like self determination theory. Um, and this theory is uh, like kind of explain that every person is motivated by external or internal factors, okay? Uh, an internal one is based like a personal interest. Like I wanted to do this because I think it's like fun, because I like it, because I wanted to do it, or it's fun, I enjoy it, or it's like a challenge. It, it, for example, I wanted to do this puzzle, you know, like a 1000 pieces of the puzzle because it's, it's a challenge, okay? And I wanted to do this because it's cool and I like to explore this because um, it will give me like um, new knowledge and all that kind of stuff. The external thing, the external factor is what is pushing you to do something that you may not interest in like doing it. Like, oh, I don't feel like it, but if I do it, somebody's like here, like if, if I do it, I'm going to get this or somebody's going to give me that or when it does matter like other people, what other people think or other people opinions, okay? We got um, in self-determination theory, we'll talk about like intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. Like, it's like, like I say, like the external and internal. Like the intrinsic motivation, it could be our own personal reward, rewarding. For example, learning English is something that you want to do because it's, it's to, because you find the challenge interesting or you think it will be nice to communicate with another language. And extrinsic motivation are external, external factors that are pushing you or motivating you to do something. I got this right here, okay? I just got it from, um, from a page that says, like, oh, I wanted to do this. I have this factor here, like I'm gonna get, um, Good grace. And I don't know if I wanted to say this part, like uh, I apply this principle motivation when I work with my kindergarten group. And I believe that every teacher does it in some, in, in some point or for, for in, in a moment. Uh, we never know the intrinsic motivation in the kids. We don't know what they think and they think are, but uh, as a teacher, we can manipulate the extrinsic uh, motivation. For example, giving them some rewards like a stickers or uh, like a small price. Like we will do, like I will tell them, like if we do good this week on Friday, we have like fun Friday. We just played. Even if we're playing like with puzzle, like with letters, sounds, but we have like play time and they like it. For my other um, topic is self-regulation and motivation. Like for me, like I have it here, write it down because it was, oh, okay. It's kind of a, like a routine for me. Uh, it's the process that helps a learner to take action toward their goal, taking control of what they own learnings and be aware of what are my, like my strengths or what are my weakness and like, like the way you manage the action you take in the process of learning. Like I have this picture here, like 
she have a whole thing like she's trying to put herself together and trying to do like a routine or something and how to learn and the last one uh i think this one is good like language attitude it says like it's like a special talent that's what the they said and it's like the cap the capacity to learn another language we can say that language attitude is like a combination of ability that we use currently in the, i'm sorry abilities that we that when we use currently it can make the learner more likely to achieve a high level of uh, profi proficiency in a second language um i just put like something here they use like a modern language attitude test this is a test that measures an individual attitude for learning a foreign a foreign language the test can be used to predict to sit in learning all basic communication skill, but particularly speaking and, speaking and listening. That was all for me tonight, girls. Okay, I'll try to take the lead now. Bear with me. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Remember, now my child broke that thing, so. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's gonna happen. Stay with me. Uh, oh, there we go. Okay, okay. You see me? Yeah. I, yeah, I just see you. Not your screen yet. Okay. No. Why not doing that? I'm telling you, I'm, I'm being an income poop here. Why isn't sharing it? It was sharing. It's sharing. Was it? Oh, okay. It was sharing. It was working. Okay. Okay. Is it back? Not yet. Okay, how long is? Because the funny thing is, I see you. I don't see the. I don't see what I'm sharing, and that really scares me. Okay. Can you girls see what I have? Yes. Okay. Okay. I decided to go with a Padlet today. So wish me luck on this one. My three topics were language attitude, Dornay's L2 motivation, self system and Dornay's willingness to communicate. Those were the three topics that resonate the most to me. For language attitude, for language attitude, I decided to go with the definition that CORE must use as a conglomerate of abilities that interact dynamically with the situation in which learning takes place. Because seriously, language attitude cannot be only one scene. It's a whole bunch of different stuff that are taking place. And hold on a second, hopefully. Never mind. It didn't work. <laughs> That's how it goes. Oh, Lord have mercy. Give me one sec. This is lovely. Let me put my camera by the way. My house internet sucks. <laughs> you girls see how that thing is loading so slowly? Okay. So anyway, as I was saying, <laughs> Car, I like the definition that Carlos gave, Carlos gave for language attitude, and uh, uh, I see that is something that's even done that Carter and McIntyre gave us in 1992 saying that it's a single best predictor for an L2 achievement. 
Fourth Moss and Safari in 2006 say that you can modify some of the skills that you have for your language attitude by experience and training. That you can see is why is one of the reasons when is an adult, as an adult, you are a language learner, you have an advantage over a younger learner because as you grow, you improve your skills and abilities and you know what you can take advantage of. Um, you couldn't talk about language attitude without touching Carol's modern language attitude test, the MLAT that was created in 1990. This language attitude predicts the learner's success in le uh, if learning is based in a pattern drilling method of language. Um, Krashnan in 1981 say that it's not really good because it just predict learning and no acquisition, which is technically what we really are learning here. Uh, we are studying here, acquisition and no learning. Um, but it, believe it or not, even so the opposition is one of the tools that has survived as the most popular measurement or predictor of successful for students. And it's funny the way it works because it works producing a correlation of achievement that only one can exceed by motivation, which is one of the topics that we really like to talk about. And not only predicts the performance of the learner in the classroom, but also in communication. But, but going back to my original topic, which it was language study to how do we connect that to the classroom? We need to understand that some students might be limited and limited because the abilities or skills that they have. And we have as a teacher work around those limitations and do not push or expect more than what they really can do because that will be a frustration. And it, that's something that we don't really want. The second topic that we need L2 motivation self system. Um, it was a we come to the conclusion that motivation is a process and not a state and it can be affected by external factors like the or their learners or the peers that we have, the classroom environment, the teacher, all the uh, kind of stuff. And it's based in part by the experience and imagination. It has three components. It's a picture that a learner has, a picture of that self or in the future. How do you see their self? How do you look, how, what do you expect of yourself? How you picture you, yourself? Where are you gonna be? What uh, are your expectations? Are you gonna be able to stand in front of a group? That picture of yourself will be your best motivation because also that will be what is gonna regulate the the, the the speed that you your pace your speed uh, that you of learning that's how you're going to determine okay and not keeping the pace and not moving fast enough i know i have to work more is this one becomes it will be like the student goal what you have what what's your where you want to be that's i love the idea of the ideal l2 self that one is and it's a affects or go with the second one presented by then that is out to self. Out to self are the tools that learners have or the tools that they believe they have. The, 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 what you're gonna use to achieve that final goal that you have, that picture of yourself in the future. And that tools or skills or abilities honestly is what you're gonna use how, but, uh, in order to deal with the negative of come whenever that you are doing doesn't come out the way you want it to to come out that they so they work to uh, they have two different functions they also help you to achieve your goal but also they help you to regulate and modify and overcome whatever comes negative the third one is the l2 learning experience why we going back to what we always say the, this this is a comp this one com it has inside what the different factors in the learning environment sorry the teacher the curriculum the peers the pressures and all the previous 
schooling experience that the person has had is going to determine how you also get motivated. All these, the auto self, the learning experience, in, and the ideal self are going to work together to create the motivation that Ernest talks about. What about the plan? You can see how motivated the student is. You have to try to work with them to construct a better picture of ideal L2 self. They, you have to try to sparkle that pixie dust and that magic to get them motivated to learn and to puff the bubble that they have protecting themselves where don't, most of the time or students never wanna get out because they're comfortable in that bubble and they don't want them. They say, I'm okay, Miss, I don't need to learn more than what I have. No, 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 we have to be that tool to help them motivate themselves better. And my third topic, I, uh, which is interesting, is is willingness to communicate or WTC. People in general have a predisposition to either communicate or not if you are given the choice. It is the antecedent to communication behavior. So it's before the communication behavior. Willingness to communicate in L1 is more than not a personal trait. And therefore the next thing that I'm gonna talk about. WTC in L2 is a little more complicated because it's not only the personal trait, but it also is affected by the proficiency and the competence that that learner has, as well as the learner readiness to engage in a conversation or discussion. When a person is not ready or doesn't feel ready, they are, there's no way, Jose, that you can make them talk. I have a student right now that even in Spanish, all she does is smile and look at me. She's not ready. She's, I don't know if she's going through the silent period, which I don't think because she doesn't even talk to me in Spanish, but she doesn't have that willingness to communicate. Um, it's also mentioned, uh, Dornier also say that it's part of that big pyramid of different stuff that works for us and is located somewhere between motivation and communication. Therefore, personality is going to play a huge role in our willingness to communicate because since WTC is a compromise of different factors, you can never overlook or forget about that very personal trait of a person of if a person is a introverted or an extroverted. Uh, if that person, like a friend of mine, she stay all week quiet, she doesn't like to talk to strangers, she's there for, for herself, and she, that she's gonna have a willingness to communicate and it's gonna be hard for us to really make sure that she is learning while acquiring because she's not there to, she doesn't want to move from that, that square where she is. Uh, in the classroom, just that, look around, understand if they're quiet, meet them halfway. Like my girl, she doesn't want to talk to me. So I sit down and I, I'm like, okay, look at me. Betsy, tell me yes or no, move your head, help me. Just let's take small steps and work with them. That's all I have. All right, it looks like I'm up then. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can share my screen. Okay, Abby, your turn. Okay, cool. Um, okay. All right. Okay, can y'all see that? <laughs> can y'all see can y'all see my screen? Yes. Okay. Okay. Can everybody see this? Yes, I like it. What Perfect. did you use? Canva. So today oh. I use Canva um, and this is my favorite thing to do because it's free for educators if you put your school email in there and you can use all the pro stuff. Um, I even designed my wedding invitations on there. So definitely oh. go check it out. Real cool. Um, so 
Um, this week we're talking about psychological factors in second language acquisition, and we did the chapter, chapter three, in understanding second language acquisition by Rod Ellis, and then I chose the article by Dornier to read as my also um, additional instructional material. So my topics for today are the self-determination theory, the process model of motivation, and integrative motivation. So let's get down to business. The self-determination theory, um, and I've got the two little kind of main ideas to the left side is what do I like and intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. So this was actually one of the first um, theories that was developed after Gardner's theories in Canada about the French and English studies done. This is by Desi and Ryan, and it took place in 1985. And it has to do mostly with intrinsic and extrinsic motivation, which was a crazy idea at the time in the field of second language acquisition, um, because we're bringing motivation into the idea now. So extrinsic motivation are external factors that motivate an individual to do something such as social pressures, grades, or work-related communication. Um, and extrinsic motivation is motivation that originates from a pleasant sense within our own selves. This can originate in our improved competence of a language or a new ability to communicate with a friend. Um, and then what is a motivation? The book talks a little bit about that, and that's the lack of motivation. And they did some studies on the lack of motivation as well as a whole. Um, and whose responsibility is it to inspire intrinsic motivation? Um, and for me, this is a hard question because I feel like as the teacher, um, it is part of your responsibility to inspire motivation, but intrinsic motivation that has to come with from within, I think it all has to do with the personality of the student and who you're talking to and what their goals in life are and how their L2 can help them get there. Um, but a classroom example that I have is intrinsic motivation is the student setting a goal of getting an A in the class. While that might seem like it's extrinsic motivation, it's their own personal goal and they set it to make them, themselves better and it's going to result in that pleasant sense within themselves. So that's intrinsic motivation. And then an, ex, an example of extrinsic motivation is giving students candy if they get an A on the test. So kind of like um, if you do this, then you get this. Um, and it's not really like, I want to do this for me. It's like, oh, I'm going to do that for that piece of candy. So I got a little girl right here. She's got her piece of candy and then intrinsic motivation. I've got it like on his mind, all coming from within. All right. So our next one is going to be um, the process model of L2 motiva motivation. And I thought this was super interesting um, because it explains motivation as a dynamic process for the first time ever. And this was done by Dornier and Otto in 1998. So what are the steps? Um, the first step is the pre-actional phase, and this is where you're going to have the goal setting, the action plan, the success expectancy. So this is kind of like what Wally was talking about, that I do, ideal um, L2 self. Like, what do you see yourself as? What are the expectations you have for going through this process? Um, what do you think that you're going to struggle in? What do you want to be good at? What is your goal at the end of the thing? So that's our pre-actional phase and the motivation that exists there, which is, I would say, at a pretty high level before you start. You're all excited about it. Then you actually get into it and you get into the actional stage and that's executive motivation. And it's the ongoing appraisal of goals. So appraisal basically just means you're kind of taking every single thing that you do and judging, did I do good at this? Did I not do good at that? And that affects your motivation. For example, if you are working on, I don't know, cognating an ER verb in Spanish, and you miss um, the nosotros uh, con conjugation, then it that might cause your motivation to go down for learning the language as a whole. Whereas if you get 100 on the test, that might cause it to go up. And then at the end in the post-actional stage, when you're done with whatever unit you're working on, that's the evaluation of learning experiences. And the motivation is dynamic throughout the process. So at the end, you're going, oh, well, how did I do? If you feel like you did good, which is what we were talking about, that competence of learning. If you feel like you're confident in your abilities, your motivation is going to be higher. Um, and if you feel like the experience went bad overall as a whole, your motivation is going to be negatively affected. Um, and so a classroom example for me would be a student. We do pre and post assessments all the time to judge how much a student knows before and then how much a student 
knows after, but this would be kind of a self-assessment that they would do. How much do I know about this and how do I feel about learning it? Um, then filling out maybe a survey during class. How do you think it's going or the teacher going around and asking the students what's going on in their groups? How do they feel about what's going on? And then a post um, a post assessment would be, okay, how do you think that went? What could you do better? Where are some things you could change? What's your attitude about it now? And we do that all the time in school um, with our students. Oh, let me go to the next one. Okay, and the next one is going to be integrative motivation. And this was um, actually um, an idea originated from Gardner in 1985, kind of the foundational researcher of all motivation. Um, and he coined the term integrative motivation, and it is defined as a motivational outlook on learning in L2, the desire to interact and the, est and the estimate of if one will succeed. So basically, it's got to do with two main components that I have on the side in the square and the circle over there, identity and desire. The identity is, once again, your ideal L2 self. Um, what do you see yourself as? And the other one is going to be your desire. Bobby. Yes. Yes. Hello. Oh, okay. Um, hello. I'm sorry, I lost the I lost the audio in my other computer, so I have to switch to the other. Oh, you're good. You're good. Sorry. You're good. Okay. Um. So, uh, just going on with integrative motivation. Um. So this one is going to be more about our identity and our desire to communicate. Um, so what is that integrative factor? It's more of the intrinsic motivation, like I was talking like I was talking about before, it's psychological and emotional identification. So how do we see ourselves psychologically? What are the emotional goals that we want to achieve? Um, for example, integrative motivation would be if you fell in love with a, another language speaker, that would be your emotional identification. You would emotionally identify with the English language now because you fell in love with a native speaker of the English language. So now you're going to emotionally identify with aspects of its culture because you love that person who is from that culture. Um, and then can one identify with the L2 if it's a foreign language? Um, and I thought this was really interesting because they did a study on it and the study says, yes, that you can. So for example, in China, they, they really identify with the English culture. Um, and that's because of their view of English culture. They view it as successful and all the different things that come out, come out of it. So even though one person in China that's learning the foreign language of English might never encounter a native speaker, they still feel like they identify with the L2 language and therefore it's an integrative motivation. And then the ideal self, which I've already touched on in a classroom example, might be a student who likes anime, might want to learn Chinese because he identifies with that part of the culture. Um, so... Anyway, motivation is a great topic, and I think it's really one of the main things that we need to focus on in the classroom because that is what pushes students to do better and to improve their skills. Um, but yeah, that's all that I have today. I'm ready for our little discussion. Okie dokie. Um, you were fast today, Abby. <laughs> yes, I was. Yes, but she did good. She did good like always. <laughs> yeah, no, and uh, and I, I miss part of it. I'm sorry. I I I, I tried all the stupid headphones. Anyway, it's okay. um, so the five topics that we had agree to disagree mm -hmm. <laughs> are um the first one that we all consider as the most important one was language attitude, mm -hmm. because if the learner does not have the language attitude, there is nothing we can do about it. No, in understanding by language attitude, go ahead, uh, Tuma. What do we understand by language attitude? Okay, wait a second. I'm, I lost the thing. <laughs> yeah. The skill. Uh, yeah. Yes, happy to me. It's the uh, stability of the. Um, wait, wait, wait a second. What go is ahead. it? I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead while you find it. No, okay. no, 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 um, no. I'm fine. I uh had. -huh. It says like. Okay. It's when we have, uh, it's like a combination, you know, when the, with the, all the abilities that will use correlate, it will, it will, uh, wait, it will, um, 
It can make the learner more likely to achieve in a high level of prof proficiency in a second language. Okay, I got something else, write it down somewhere. Like, um, well, this is great when you have everything around and then you just lost the paper. But okay, can somebody get the point? Because it's, okay, wait a second, I got it, wait. <laughs> it's like a special talent, I got it. Okay. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <sighs> Can you say something else? Oh my God, well, this is great. What I was saying, like you say, language attitude is all those abilities, all those special talent or skills that student has, and it will be ma make it will make learning or her more capable to achieve a, a certain level of proficiency. Mm -hmm. No, that's very different than intelligence. Okay, and it even so, it's different than intelligence. It can be measured. Okay, we can measure that was the one telling us that we have less than 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, so it can be measured and is being measured by the MLAT and is one of the most important topics that we found. The second topic that we found was self-determination. It was touched by Abby and Sulma. Yes. Abby, you wanna start? Or Sulma, do you have your, your comments now? Or do you want Abby to yes. start? Oh, I'll, I'll... I was just gonna say that I believe that both like intrinsic and extrinsic motivation like goes kind of like together, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like hand to hand. And we never know how the, like I say, we never know the intrinsic motivation in, on, in, in nobody, in no kids, but we can help them like to get there with the extrinsic motivation to get to them, okay? Like encourage them maybe, that's the word. Um, like we cannot make a student like a certain school subject, okay? But we can tell them like, if you do your job, if you do, if you uh, finish your, um, your homework, I can give you like a reward or something. It happened with me, with the little ones. I don't know how to work in high school. Okay, how can you do that on high school or middle school or TIS, I mean, intermediate, but it works good for me. I can manipulate that kid or that extrinsic thing, you know? And uh, for a high schooler for me to tell them. Hey, like I will give you, I will, I'll give you in a high school. Hey, Wally, I'll give you a lollipop. I do. Yeah, like, I ah. do. <laughs> yeah but it's different. No. It's like fourth and fifth grade. They, 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 still, they like it. Find me some brownie. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> well, you know what? We were talking about um the cacao, which is mm -hmm. I I just jumped out of the the seat where I was sitting and I told them like, hey, the best cacao is from my country, it's from Venezuela, it's from the where what I would I used to live like like an hour away from I used to live like the cacao is from Chuao it's the best one well, now the kids want me to I mean they were listening and they were so excited about but now they want me to bring them chocolate like from so I'm I have to go and get them some chocolate from uh but, my pueblo, but mi pueblo yes and I can find something there mm -hmm. yeah okay um, Ali, go ahead. You have anything to add to what Suma um, say about self determination? Yeah, I think yeah. That I completely agree with what she said. Um, and I think something that happens a lot of times is that a lot of times people will look down on an extrinsic motivation, especially at like the older levels. Like, oh, they shouldn't be working for a piece of candy. But sometimes we just have to do whatever we can do to get them to learn. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. think like that if extrinsic motivation what's helping them like they can build on that for the rest of their life oh you want a better job like that's extrinsic motivation and mm -hmm. that's going to turn into an intrinsic motivation whenever they see the value that it's paying off in their life they're going to realize like oh I should do this because I want to be better and then it's going to turn into intrinsic motivation um but that's pretty much all that I had to say about that Okay, for the third one, we all agree that was willingness to communicate because there's nothing we can do if that person doesn't want to talk. 
if they don't have the willingness, if they don't have the predisposition, if they don't want to communicate, if that's not within them, there is nothing we can do about it. Mm -hmm. um, we have to understand that it's, it's a lot easier to have a willingness to communicate in the A than in the L2 because the willingness to communicate for the L2 is going to be affected by all the factors that we have around. Um, so there is nothing we can do if they don't have the willingness. There is no the motive. They might have all the motivation in the world, but if they are an introverter, how do you say introverter? Abby. What do you say? How do you say introverter? Introverted. When, mm -hmm. Introvert. You got it. You got it. That person is an introvert. If it's, they're not going to be talking to you. Uh, uh, we, funny story, really quick, we have a student, no, I guess so sweet, but a student that he, she has what is called selective mute. Oh my God, I was so going to say that. I was going to say that. Choose, 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 choose. <laughs> Nothing. I will talk are... to you, but I will not talk to her. As soon as she <laughs> walk out of the school, she will talk to everybody. But once she's inside the building. And it's something. It's, it's labeled as a disability, selective mute. A mute. I'm like, mm -hmm. holy mother of God. Well, what is it is what it is. Okay, moving on. We have number four, self-regulation. We're already in number four? Mm-hmm. Yes, ma'am. Oh That's me. I'm sorry. We only have two minutes left, so come on, okay. Tuma. Okay. Um, it's, I believe it's like, like I say, it's kind of like a routine that um, somebody takes, um, takes action or activate or take control of the, to evaluate their own um knowledge or learning and or be aware of oh this is my strength this is this is my weakness my witness and then I'm, not witness what am I saying I, for, I, I don't know how to witnesses right no forget about it <laughs> I'm sorry I'm sorry Miss Prado <laughs> but you got the point you got the point help me Abby Yes, I think that's great. And self-regulation and being able to maintain like what you can do and know what you can do and do all of these different tasks at the same time with balance. I think that really ties into the last point that we had, which was integrative motivation. And I think it ties a nice bow on everything because to learn a language, to learn another um, way to communicate with others, it all requires motivation. It doesn't, re it doesn't mean matter if it's extrinsic intrinsic if it's anything about your um idea to self you have to be motivated to learn a, a second language you have to have the want to and the ability to try and the language aptitude to mm -hmm. be able to do it and it's all connected it's yes. all connected yes yeah and i was telling i was telling wally i was telling wally that we're talking about the same thing like yeah it's over and over and over yes. You have to have uh, self-determination. Self -determination. You have to have the willingness to communicate. You mm -hmm. have to self-regulate yourself because you have to control yourself and know, okay, mm -hmm. this, like Suma was saying, this is my weakness. This is my strength. my strength. I have to work on my weakness. What do I need to do to work on my weakness? What tools can I use? What reinforcement do I need? How can I study to work on that? How can I do it better? Mm -hmm. and I cannot do it better. Integrative motivation. Yeah. Uh, That's those great. are the five topics that we consider the most important. And we have 30 seconds. Good night, everyone. Tulma, hope you feel better. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, girls. And, and I'm sorry. We'll start Monday with a board discussion. Have fun. Perfect. Bye. Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye.